Let's jump into our sermon series. We're in a sermon series called Summer in the Psalms. Have you guys been enjoying this sermon series? Yeah, it's been fun um, kind of looking at different, the Psalms are so like broad in terms of emotional range and theological um, topics. But I love the psalmist because we see, you know, David wrote about 80 of these Psalms. We see King David. But in these Psalms, we see such a heart for, for God. We also see a heart that's conflicted, right? Like a heart that's like one minute all about God. And then the next minute it's like, where have you gone, Lord? Why, are you, why have you forsaken me? It's almost like this raw, hot take, this un, like unfiltered communication or conversation with God. And I think it's really cool that we get to, to look at that. And today um, we're gonna be in Psalm chapter six. If you have a Bible, Psalm chapter six, verses three through seven. And then um, we'll go jump to Matthew chapter six. We're gonna look at the Lord's prayer as well. <clears throat> I wanna to read to you Psalm chapter six, and we'll start with this. My soul is in deep anguish. Your soul is the place where you feel emotions. It's, it's gonna live forever with you. Your soul is gonna go with you. But here's the reality. Some of your souls are not in a good place. How do I know that? Because if it's true for David, it's true for all of us. How's your soul doing? You're like, no one's ever asked me that. Well, we'll get into it today. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me and save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I'm worn out from my groaning. Anyone have any groaning kids in your house this summer? You ready for school to start? Okay, yeah. They're wearing you out. All night long. All night long. This is the genesis of that song, Lionel Richie. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. David is lamenting right now. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. And watch this. They fail because of all my foes. The reason I'm in this season, God, is because look around. Everyone is out to get me. Where are you? God, you're not doing what I need you to do, I wanna to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about how do we pray through disappointment? How do we pray when we're disappointed? Let's pray right now. Father God, Holy Spirit, come, breathe on this service like you did the first. Speak through me now, in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. amen. Uh, the Psalms are full of a, a range of emotion, like I said. Um, you have lament, which is like basically the whole book of Lamentations. Lamenting is like, where are you, God? It's, it's crying out to God. It's, it's, it's like despair. It's frustration. You have praise, which is, you know, God's so good. You, Lord, like your, loving fail, your, your love never fails me. Like your loving kindness endures forever. It's just exalting the, the goodness of God, proclaiming the the, the, the truth of who God is. And, and how many of you guys like love those Psalms? You love to read the, the Psalms that, you know, it's like, man, I, I'm, I'm all about that life, right? This is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and I'll be glad in it. And those are like, those are the Psalms that we read when we are trying to combat disappointment. And I wonder, I wonder if, if maybe today some of us are still experiencing disappointments and frustrations not because, um, not because of a lack of faith, but rather because maybe God is wanting you to lean into the disappointment a little bit and lean into the fact that you are, you are frustrated. And Christians were really good at putting on a, a smile and, and saying like, praise God. God bless, God's gonna do it. We, we, we faith it and that's okay. I think we need a positive confession, but I think at the same time, if we are trying to hide our emotions from our Father who's in heaven, who knows everything about us, and if we get in a habit of being disappointed and not talking to God about our disappointments, I think we get left in a unique position where we love Jesus and we love God, but parts of our heart are withheld from God because if we're honest, maybe God has disappointed us and we haven't been honest with him. Are you with me this morning? Say amen. Matthew chapter six talks about the Lord's Prayer. 
The Lord's Prayer is the most famous prayer uh, around. Like, this is like the prayer. You probably memorized it when you were little. Um, I memorized the Catholic version. And um, when I read the Bible for the first time, I was like, wait a minute. That's not what I memorized. It was close, but it was just different, you know. And uh, I remember reading, I uh, knew that prayer, but it wasn't until I actually started getting into the Word of God and praying and talking to God that the verse, that verse just jumped out at me. I'm like, whoa, this this has significant substance to it in a way that I just re would rehearse it before, almost like if, as if to say like, you know, good food, good meat, good God, let's eat. That was kind of like my, that was, that was what the Lord's Prayer was to me before. But check out what Matthew records Jesus saying in how we ought to pray. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we, has, as, we has also, as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is the word of the Lord. This is what God tells us how to pray. But here's the, here's the challenge. When you read this is how to pray, there is a instruction here, and I, could, I, could, I have a whole sermon I could do about the Lord's Prayer and how, how the, each one breaks up into a specific request from God. But here's what I wanna challenge us with this morning is this. How do we, when we're disappointed, how do we actually go to God with disappointment and pray these types of prayers where we, we know we have something going on in our heart that we're not really satisfied with, we're mad about. How do we actually have intimacy with God and, and how do we actually go to him? How do we pray through disappointment? I'm gonna give you four things. Number one, write this down if you're taking notes. If, you're, if you don't take notes, write it down. Number one, tell God how you feel. Sounds pretty easy, right? Yeah, just tell him how you feel. Men especially have a harder time with this. Here's why. We have been trained for so long to not talk about how we feel. And this is not a good thing, bad thing. Like men, we have the, I think there's parts of how God created us to be able to go into, a, uh, into war and to fight and to be able to compartmentalize when we come home and, and go, okay, that was then. Uh, there's parts of men that we, we, can, we can live in a way that it's, it's ingrained in us to go into places and spaces that are very difficult and then come back and be able to kind of have this place where we just put stuff and we don't look at that box until... It gets too full, am I right? And what happens, and women, you have the same thing. It's just different sometimes. But I'm telling you, you, listen church, you can fake it with your friends and you can fake it with your Bible study people sometimes. And that's the, dude, you know that's the most, the most fake you ever are is when someone asks you like, tell me what God's teaching you lately. You're like, well, well, well the Lord has been speaking to me about... Um, you know, Job chapter 33, where it says, now listen to my words, pay attention to everything I say. And when I, when I think about that verse, that is a great one, that was random. And we're really good at faking it um, with, with people that don't know us that well, like at work, but you can't fake it with God. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't fake it with God. Look at your second choice and just be like, what's up? <laughs> if there's one place you can be 100% honest, it's with God. You might be saying, well, shouldn't we be 100% honest with everyone, pastor? I mean, like, I just tell it like it is. You know any of those people? I just tell it like it is. Like, don't, I'm, I'm, I'm Christian. I'll just tell it like it is. Like, if you tell it like it is, you would get fired tomorrow. <laughs> you would be divorced, sir. <laughs> you would be all alone if you were just... 100% honest with everyone. Like, that's not the goal. The goal is not to be 100% honest with every single person that you meet. That's not the goal. For example, um, like, I know people all the time that they'll be talking about something in their life and, 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 and then you find out, like, you thought they, that you had, like, an intimate, like, wow, I'm so glad they confided in me. But then you, like, you hear them talking to the barista at Starbucks and they're like, yeah, you're not gonna believe what happened. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you were like trusting me with that. You just tell everyone all your stuff? And you're like, well, pastor, shouldn't you just be honest with everyone? No, no, the Bible doesn't teach that. You, I'm not telling you to lie, but here's the, here's the principle. 
everything that comes out of your mouth should be true. But not everything that's true should come out of your mouth. I learned this year one of marriage. How does this look on me? Well, I don't know. With like 30 minutes left to go get ready. Not a good idea. How's this taste, honey? How, how'd you like dinner? It wasn't your best meal. I learned, guys, I learned, okay? I love you, Stacey. Here's why. The only person that can handle all of your frustrations, all of your honesty, all of your dis disappointment is God. First Peter 5, 7 says this. Cast all, everyone say all. All, all of your anxiety upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. He loves you. He cares for you. And he's designed to take all of your burdens, all of your frustrations, all of your complaints, and he's able to take them all. Doesn't mean you can't have some people you're honest with. It just means that you give all of your honesty to God. He gets every single bit of it. He's designed to take your anxieties because he cares for you. And if you start doing this, to, if you don't have this relationship with God, here's what you do. You're that guy. When someone says, how are you doing? You go, well, let me tell you. And we're like, no, 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 I just want to know how you're doing. Like, it's more of like a, hey, what's up? Good afternoon. Oh, let me tell you all my, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. And you start listening to people like that. And all of a sudden, if you do that to me for like more than 10 minutes and you're just complaining, 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 I have a little bit of ADD. And honestly, I can only handle so much negativity. I will start saying things like, dang, that's crazy. <laughs> and if I'm, <laughs> if I hit like four or five, Dang, that's crazy. You've lost me. I'm gone. I'm thinking about lunch. Dang, that's crazy. It's so mean, pastor. No, I'm serious. I, I teach my kids this too. Like in our house, contagi uh, complaining is contagious. So like Hadley will start whining about something. Bricks and took my turn. And then Stacy's like, you need to talk to your dad about that. No, I'm just joking. And then Stacey will give me the look like, you need to handle this. I'm like, I don't even want to deal with that drama. That, they need to go play outside. It's the middle of summer. Go play. That's why I bought you a bike. Go ride that bike. And all the parents said, amen. amen. Why, why is it we get, why is it that we're adverse sometimes to people's disappointments, frustration? Not to say that we can't be a friend and can't, your wife's telling you something, your husband, you're going to listen, your kids. What I'm saying is you're, we're not designed to take all of it. Why is that? It's because certain people in your life, if you were to take all their negativity and all their complaint and just listen and listen and listen and listen, take it all in. Eventually what they're going to tell you will get into your heart potentially. And what you, what was once their offense and what was once their issue and what was once their frustration with the boss or that person in your family is now your issue. And because you're not God, you're not designed to carry all that stuff in your heart because eventually you will have the same issue or the same offense about that person as they do. They did what to you? I don't even like that guy now either. I hate him. I don't even know who he is, but I don't like him. You might say. God can always handle it. Do you know why some of you don't feel close to God or others? And I'll say this from personal experience. <clears throat> it's just us here in the room and the internet. You unintentionally censor your prayers with God. You unintentionally censor your prayers with God. You know when you try to talk to someone that's easily offendable and you say things like, well, what I was feeling in the moment was, was you know, you try to like really couch things with great, you're doing that with God. And God doesn't play that game. God knows everything about your innermost parts. He doesn't care that you, that you are saying F words in your mind. Like he's like, yep. Bring it. What else? What else you got? Oh, you're that mad. I, okay. 
He already knows. And here's why you don't feel, here's why you don't feel close to God or others. Because if you practice censorship with God, which is the most intimate relationship if you're a Christian, which is the inner, like he knows everything about me. When you are hiding things that you're frustrated about from God, you cannot have real vulnerability with people. Oh, no way. Because here's what you're gonna do. You feel like you have to hide from God. There's no way you're gonna be 100% with someone that is face to face with you. And so here's the recipe for disaster. You go around living your life, censoring your prayers with God, not actually telling him what you're frustrated about. And then people ask you what's going on in your life. Everything's fine. Everything is awesome. Everything is good. And then until one day you just have like a mental breakdown. What do you do when you're frustrated? How do we pray through disappointment? He already knows what you're feeling. I feel frustrated, God. You ever feel that one? Have you ever felt frustrated by a family member that didn't really deliver on what you needed from them? Like you go, I would never do that if, that was, if I was in their position. When you feel the most disappointed, uh, have you ever felt like manipulated by people? Have you ever, and it's hard to name your emotions, by the way, because again, no one taught us to do this. Um, Stacy and I went to counseling uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, it was the first time we went to like a full like, you know, we did Christian counseling, but this was like a full on, like let's marriage workshop, do this whole thing. And uh, someone throw me that pillow right there. I'm gonna show you guys something. This was birthed out of that uh, season. We graduated from, from marriage counseling, guys. Congratulations, Maganias. We have a perfect marriage now. No problems. So what happened after that, we realized that um, no one had ever taught us this idea of emotion Emotional awareness. I thought I was, had a high EQ because I was very emotionally, I've always been a very aware of what other people are feeling or the vibe of the room. Like, are you good? It's my peacemaker, like my nine wing or whatever for Enneagram people. Um, I'm always like, are you good? Because if you're good, I'm good. Okay, cool. Uh, I want everyone to have a good time. But, but what I thought was a high EQ, a emotional awareness, I was actually just highly aware of what people thought about me, which was draining because you can't please everybody. And if everyone has the same value to you and your worth is determined by their, their thoughts about you, it's hard. And for those of you guys that don't give a crap about what people think, you're like, you're so, you're so weak. Let me tell you guys, it is really, really hard when you struggle with this. And some of you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, but for the, anyone, does anyone know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. Okay, cool, cool, okay. Not alone. Whew. If no one raised their hand, I would've just left. I'm like, I feel, I feel afraid. I feel rejected. Yeah. We, we bought this for our kids because what I realized is like for a long time when I was mad about something, I would just stuff it. And I would just be like, I'm mad. And I would just go pray. And then I'd be like, God, so stupid. And I would just kind of be frustrated. But then I realized there's a lot of times in, in life where you have these, these emotions, anger, disgust, sadness, fear, surprise, happiness, where you're not able to acknowledge your, your emotions because you've been so good at censoring them and not being frustrated or not being you know, out of whack. So you end up unable to name the emotion and ultimately you're not able to process what God has called you to process with him. So now we bought these for our kids. And trust me, this sounds like a really, it's like a parent flex. Like we read like, we've read like one whole book about parenting, okay? I'll never write a book about parenting, but you should if you're good. But here's what we do now. Hey, uh, Brixton, it sounds like you're really mad. Do you feel mad right now? Yes. Okay. What's that like? What, what's going on? Well, I'm mad because this and this and this. I'm helping him name his emotion. And I go, man, you know what? I've been mad too. Why are you so mad? Well, I'm, I'm mad because they won't let me play with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not fun to be rejected, huh? No. What's he doing? He's taking inventory. I say, you know what? I've been rejected by friends too. You know who else? Jesus was reje rejected by his friends. Do you want to talk to God about this? Okay. And then I'll pray and he'll forget, he'll forget it all happened. But <laughs> what are we doing? We're listening to what God's speaking to us and we're not censoring our prayers. I'm mad, God. I'm, Lord, I'm frustrated. I didn't think it'd be like this still. I'm still doing stupid stuff. 
Why do you love me so much? God, I'm so, I'm so frustrated at this thing at work. I'm so mad that I got overlooked for this promotion. I'm mad. God, why didn't you do something? Don't censor your prayers. Number two, how do we get through this? How do we pray through disappointment? Ask God for what you might be missing. If you don't know, just ask him. God, what am I missing here? You guys, we're in a relationship with Jesus, the creator of the universe. He wants to help you. But here's the question. Are you asking for help? What have you missed? Maybe ask God, what am I missing this week? What am I missing in my life? Why am I, why am I feeling disappointed? If you're a parent and you feel bad about your parenting sometimes, uh, by the way, we all feel bad about our parenting sometimes. That's how you know you're a good parent. You're like, man, I think I'm screwing them up right now. I, think, I know for sure when I said that, that was definitely like a, a, a core memory, like the movie Inside Out. Like we just screwed that one up. Lord, give us grace. Here's how you know you're a bad parent. You think you're the best parent ever. You think you're better than everyone else. Terrible parent. We are the best parent. Our kids are perfect. They all, you know, it's like, no, they're not. Parenting is hard because you always feel like you're missing something, don't you? Here's the deal. If you're a parent, you, good parents feel bad about missing things. Here's why. Because you realize how important it is the job that you've, uh, you've signed up for at raising up a next generation adult that will go and one day be an adult themselves. They're gonna go and live and have lives and you're like, man, I don't wanna screw this up. God, please help me. If you feel bad, um, remember this. Jesus' parents lost him one day, Mary and Joseph. One day they're going and they're at this festival. They're, they're in Jerusalem and check it out. It's in the Bible. So Jesus was like, hey, make sure you include the part where Mary and Joseph left me behind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you throw that in there too. Don't leave that one out. Luke chapter two, listen. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not miss him at first. <laughs> Joseph's like on the camel, he's like, it's a nice little quiet ride. He's like, James, everything good back there? Everything's fine, dad. Yeah, we're good. Jesus is back. It's like, uh, what was the movie, uh, Home Alone? Remember Home Alone? I love this, this is like the best movie. Uh, Macaulay Culkin, circa 1992. Macaulay Culkin, cutest kid in the world, then he grew up and we're like, what happened? God's like, I gotta balance this out. Like first half, super cute, second half, eh. yeah. Don't judge me. And I remember this scene where, where they're on the airplane, remember, and they're all going to Europe and they got all their stuff, passports, they run through the airport. They left Kevin at home, right? And, and Kevin's at home and, and he's sleeping upstairs and, and he got in a fight with his parents the night before so he's kind of in trouble. And he comes down and, and the scene is so beautifully done and, and it shows this juxtaposed like scenarios where Kevin's at home and then all of a sudden they're on the airplane and the mom, the redhead lady, she's having this moment where she's checking all of her stuff and she's like, I feel like I'm forgetting something. And like the best one-liner ever in any movie, she's sitting there in her airline seat and she's like, Kevin! And all of a sudden you're like, and it's on like Donkey Kong, right? I wonder when you're sitting on your journey, wherever you're going, in your airplane, what are you forgetting? What are you missing? You're disappointed at something or God, there's a season of disappointment. What are you missing? What, what is not, what is missing right now? What are you forgetting? What's God, God say, hey, like you need Kevin. You forgot him. Like, what is it that you've, you've left behind? What are the things that you're, that you're missing? Because disappointment oftentimes leads to us going, God, what are you doing? And God's saying, when you're disappointed, I want you to ask the question. God's trying to get us to ask the question. What are we doing? I'll give you a couple questions. Here's one. Ask this question. Have I sinned? Wouldn't be church if I didn't say sin. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're like, okay, yeah, we're at church. We sin. We all have sinned. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. We get that. Here's the deal. You're always sinning because you're a sinner. Me too. We've sinned. We've, we, we, we fall short every single day. Here's the question. Are you asking God where have I sinned against you? Because if you do, I promise you, you will begin to get, you will begin to get downloaded things that God's saying, you're, you're missing this thing. Here's what, I, here's what I mean. A miss in archery is called a sin. When you miss, you, you pull the bow back, boom, you miss. You miss the mark. 
when you are sinning, there's something that God's saying, I didn't, you're looking for the thing that I've called you to do, but you're doing it in the wrong way. You're trying to get happiness, but you're using alcohol or substance abuse to get there. You're looking for, for a connection, but you're using sexual uh, intimacy in an unhealthy way outside of marriage. That's, that's sin. You're trying to get the thing I want to give you, but you're missing the right direction, the right pathway. Are you tracking with me? So here's the deal. Ask God, have I sinned? Have I missed something? And then that will lead you not to go, and God, what are you doing? God, what are you doing? I need a prophetic word over my life so someone can come to me. The Lord's gonna release you in four days. And it's like, no. Probably just wants to like do something in me during this season because I probably sinned. Have I sinned? Question number two is, is there something I need to learn? You should take notes. It's, it's better if you take notes. I'm serious, you, your brain like remembers, remembers more. Um, it, is there something I need to learn in this season from this disappointment? If you have, if your work has drama and you're involved in it and your ex had a bunch of drama and your friend group has a bunch of drama and you're involved in drama on social media um, all those things are not the problem. You are. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, we can clap for that. Yeah. Um, you're the common denominator. And if you know that person, stay away from that person. Love them from a distance. Here's why. Um, you need to learn something when you're going through uh, difficult seasons of disappointment. And here's the reality. If you don't learn from it in this season, you'll have to face that tra- challenge again the next season. And... I'm telling you, there's a, you don't have to live. If you're disappointed because someone offended you, you can either be offended or live offended. It's your choice. But if you don't learn how to forgive and and move past it, you're going to carry that into your next season and you'll eventually have to take the test of offense again. What are you going to learn this time in this season from God as he's trying to, to teach you something? Number three, is God protecting me from something I cannot see? And why'd she break up with me, you might be saying. I thought she was the one. Maybe, maybe there was something that God was taking you away from for a reason. Why did he break up with me? Maybe it wasn't the right person, the right season. Why, why didn't I get that job? In hindsight, you're like, that was probably great that I didn't get that job. They closed during COVID. Praise God, I have a job. What is it that God is protecting me from that I cannot see? And lastly, how do we pray through disappointment? Disappointment. Thank God for what he's done in the past. Do you know that your brain naturally is wired to remember negative emotions and memories better because of your amygdala, which helps you stay alive, essentially? Fight, flight. Band can come up. The, the, the reality is you forget what you should remember and you remember so often what you should forget. The Bible says that your sins are cast as far as from the east as to the west, that he remembers your sins no more. But why is it that I keep remembering my sins, Lord? Why is it that I keep rehearsing the failures? Why is it I keep going back to the traumas that I didn't didn't deserve that, Lord, that hurt. And why is that? I believe the Christian has an enemy named Satan. And I don't believe that he's responsible for everything, but I do think that he works strongest in between your ears. And I think whatever voice you're listening to today is ultimately going to determine the, 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 the path you take in the future. So here's the question. When's the last time you thank God for something he did in the past? When's the last time you just took a moment, just took a beat just to say, you know what, God, thank you so much that you moved in that season, that you did something that I, could ne- I never thought you would come through. Like for us, and for us right now, we look at this little baby, Easton, who's like seven months old, and he looks like a three month old, that was born at 24 or 26 weeks gestation, guys. He was two pounds and four ounces. He could have easily went into heaven, but by the grace of God and the power of prayer, God gave us a miracle baby. I'm thankful for that baby. Thank you, God, for our miracle baby. When's the last time? Just thank God for something he's done in the past. When you're going through disappointment, church, 
and you're facing all sorts of weight and anxiety and fear and, and frustration, here's what you do. Like David is crying out to God, cry out to God and say, God, I know that I'm not always faithful, but you're always faithful. And I know if you did it then, you're gonna do it now again, Lord. So I trust you in this disappointment, knowing, Lord, that you're gonna get me through this. Paul did this when he thought about his past. He would always remind the enemy, hey, I used to be a sinner. I used to be a chief sinner. I used to kill Christians, but man, now I am a, a child of God. And he would proclaim the testimony of what God's done in his life. Start reminding yourself of what God's done for you in the past. Start building some altars of what God, God's faithfulness. He got you through that marriage storm. He got you through that financial thing, you know. He got you through COVID without losing all of your faculties and losing your mind with all the craziness. What is it that God's reminding you right now? Probably need to write that down. Probably need to write it down in a note or write it on your forehead. <laughs> In 2006, Stacy and I took a day trip from Bakersfield, where we lived, to, to Pismo Beach, California, also known as Bakersfield by the Beach. We drove over for the day, and it was a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, Stacy had a, a Juicy Couture uh, Velour tracker, uh, tracksuit on, and I had some Amber Combi and Fitch type swag. And I'll never forget, we took a photo on, uh, over at Spooner's Cove in uh, Montana de Oro. And that photo became kind of like a, oh yeah, God, that was cool. That was like, our, like we're in love, you know? A few years later, uh, we'd have that photo on our wall. A few years later, I took her to the same location and asked her to be my wife, and she said yes. <laughs> yeah. Behind every surprised husband is a surprised mother-in-law. <laughs> love you, Ma. And I remember that moment was like a, a, a day that I'll never forget. I'll never, ever forget that because it was just super sweet. But we didn't realize we were creating a, an altar to remember God that a few years later after that, we would have a baby girl named Hadley. And then a, a couple years later, we'd have a baby boy, but it wasn't Brixton. It was actually a baby between Brixton and Hadley uh, named Adam who came stillborn. Super sad. And we, we had him cremated and we took him from our home and we drove a few hours and drove to the beach to the same spot to, to like scatter his ashes. And man, we were crying, like just so sad. It was just like this moment of like, oh, this is sucks, you know? And for a moment I thought, man, this, <laughs> I thought that we were ruining the, the, the moment. I thought, I'm like, we're ruining the, our special place. Like it's gonna be ruined, it's gonna be sad now. It's gonna be terrible. and and, and I, mean, I guess it still is sad, but, but check this out. I have photos on the wall of this, the, this moment. We have photos that represent seasons and I look at those photos now and even though it was super sad in the moment and we were broken, I look back on that season, Stacey and I both do, as the moment where God met us at our lowest, most frustrated, angry, devastated season of our life where we thought, certainly God, there's nothing worse than this. God, you'll, will you ever pull us out of this despair of losing a baby, Lord? Where are you, God? And God met us at the bottom. He met us when we were completely broken. And I look at that photo now and it brings me joy. Why? Because I can actually testify to the fact that our God isn't just the God of the... God is the same when you're up here and when you're down here. God is the same when everything's good and God is the same when everything is not good. God is the same when you are at your wits end and frustrated going, God, where are you? I don't know what's going on. And when you remember the goodness of God, when you're disappointed and you remember the faithfulness of yesterday, I promise you it will help you walk into the faithfulness of tomorrow because God is faithful always. So, so here's what you do as we close. Accept where God has you today. Accept it. I thought I'd be married by now, but I'm okay being single. You can be frustrated, just accept it. You know what? I thought this would be different, but this is what it is. 
your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Isn't it interesting that Jesus, the savior of the world, also taught us a position of submittal to the king. So Jesus, the Lord and savior saying, here's how I want, I wanna save you. I wanna make you new. I wanna give you new life, forgiveness. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop being the king of your life and I want you to pray for the kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not your will. That as you give up your right to be the king of your life, Jesus takes reign and authority and that is the strength that you need when you're feeling the frustration of this world and the disappointment that we so often carry. That's how you pray for disappointment. Let's pray. Lord, your will be done. Your kingdom come. Let your kingdom kingdom come in our lives, Lord. Let us not be our own lowercase God, lowercase G God. Let us be servants of the most high God. Remind us, Lord, of your goodness and your faithfulness that we're, we're not in control, but Lord, we are, we are in relationship. We are sons and daughters of the one who is in control. And we may not be able to change our situation, but certainly we can accept the fact that you are in charge. And if this is the, what we're going through for this season, then let us glorify you in it, not try to just get out of it. Lord, your word says in Psalm 71, I tell of your goodness all day long. I will speak of your salvation, though it is more than I can understand. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will proclaim your goodness, yours alone, God. You have taught me ever since I was a young boy and, and I still tell of your wonderful acts, but now that I'm old and my hair is gray, don't abandon me, Lord, oh God. Be with me while I proclaim your power and might to all generations to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches the sky. You have done great things and there's no one like you. Lord, we declare your goodness this morning and I pray, God, that you would help us once again surrender to your Lordship, surrender to the fact that we are not in control, but God, when we're frustrated, disappointed, we can come directly to you and we can tell you everything that we're going through. And then when you do that, when we do that, Lord, you lend your ear and you walk with us through it. So this morning, if you're here today with eyes closed and heads bowed, if you're a believer, but you're going through some pretty tough times right now, maybe you're feeling disappointed with God and you need, you need to just to like have a moment with God right now, just pop your hand up. I want to pray for you. If that's you, you're, you're saying, hey, pray for me, pastor. Yeah. Feeling some disappointment. I want to pray for you, but I also want to pray for a second group of people. If you're here today and you are far from God, <laughs> you're like, dude, I don't even know if God knows my name. Can I tell you that God sees you and he loves you and he's got a plan for your life, but he cannot, he cannot do what he wants to do in your life till you surrender your life to him that he gave you his son, Jesus, so that you would know that you're valuable, that he died for you before you could even, before you even set foot on this earth, God took your place, took your sin, nailed it to the cross through Jesus. And then on the third day rose again to prove to the world that he is more than able to be the savior of the world, that he is the son of God and he has the power to forgive sins. And if you have sins that you're carrying around, shame, guilt, and you're frustrated at life right now, I'm telling you, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait, respond now in faith and God will meet you in your decision. I promise you, he did it for me and he can do it for you. If he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. If that's you today and you would like to make that de declaration, I'm not gonna embarrass you, I just wanna pray for you. On the count of three, if that's you, just raise your hand so I can pray for you. One, two, three, raise your hand right now. Amen, amen. God sees your hand. So good. Let's all pray this together. Nobody prays alone here at Active Church. Just say this out loud with me. Say this, Heavenly Father, thank you for saving me. Jesus, you're my Lord. 
I give you my life. Right now, I make you my Lord. Send your Holy Spirit. Come live in my body all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's give it up for that. God is good, amen, amen.